Okay guys, so we're showing you the whole process here from beginning to end too. So this is how we are cutting our cores. So I'm going to be trying to make these available on my website. So, um, I just like it better. They all fall straight down. If you had a hole in your bench, they could even fall even in straight into the bin rather than having a little ramp here. But super simple, guys. Super fast. And the other thing is super accurate. Easy to adjust. Nothing's came loose. Um... Just not problems for me. Um, the Corbin one works. I'm not com complaining about that. It just this is easier. And I'm all about telling you guys the truth here. I love my Corbin stuff, but I don't like my Corbin core cutter. So I found something. I had to modify it because it was smaller. Didn't have big enough hole for a 30 cal. So work on getting it upsized a little bit, a little bigger than this, but as you can see it's pretty effortless, just cuts the core, drops it down, just like that guys, no problem at all, I'll take you in for a close flyby of the machine here. Super simple, those are your adjustment screws for two different sizes. I had to bore this one out, out you'll see, to fit the 30 cal and the cutter and everything. Guys, it's super simple and uh, yeah, I like the way it works. So this is what we use to do our cores and then from there they come over and you're seeing the pressing process in this film as well. So we will take you there in a second. Thank you. Okay guys, Jason here with Dead Lead Air. Bringing you a video today about our Corbin press. And um, I think right now we're sitting around uh, 50,000 to 60,000 rounds done with this press. Um, and... We're loving it. A lot of that I've been, you know, remelting and shooting and remelting to get our slugs perfect. Um, these are our 70 grain eviscerator line. These are our hollow ogive slug. These are our award winning hollow ogive slug. So I'm just going to kind of show you the process that I go through. Right now, these are our heavies. Um, lights we don't use. Lights either get remelted down or we're thinking about using them in another product, um, a clinkers line. And those will just be lights up to five tenths of a grain light, um, which is still better than most of all the competition out there. Um, as well as um, our eviscerator um, shooter's choice, which is what we provide the tenth of a grain um, accuracy on all the slugs so um, anyways these go back through and I'll just kind of show you that it's super simple it's you don't have to press hard it's just a quick to the bottom and taking off a little extra um, that's on there and uh, so then I'll show you some other kind of tips and tricks that we run into with running large large quantities around through the press as far as um, some kind of tricks I have. So I bought this silver polishing rag, okay? So um, this I use to take excess, excess lead off the die here because sometimes it builds up. This does not have enough, you know, polishing power to, to hurt the steel. It's not hard enough grit to hurt the steel but it keeps that lead build up off there because it's not so much with oxidized lead but if you get really nice clean lead that you ran through a, 
um, just freshly pouring into cores, um, then it will stick. It's a little stickier. This oxidized lead is a little bit better in the way that it does not stick as much. But you just kind of got to keep an eye on that, even with the proper amount of lubricant, with non-oxidized lead at all, super clean lead is going to stick a little more to your dyes. So um, these are not re-lubricated. This is still the original lubricant that goes on there. So these will go through the press a total of three times. So just wanted to kind of do a little quick of this. I'm not going to, you know, film me doing a bunch of this. It's just super simple. You're just going through and repressing all your heavies to get them down to the proper weight. So then we'll go over to the scale here. We'll take these and we'll weigh these for you guys. And usually they're in a little tray, but so that's six nine nine seven. That goes in the good pile. Six nine nine. That's good. We're going tenth of a grain accuracy, guys, so you guys can kind of see the process here. So out of 4,000 rounds, that's our lights right there. So uh, if you have your dies set up correctly and your lubricant metered out correctly, you can get extreme accuracy with this press, even doing it by hand. But it does take tinkering. It does um, having your place that you're working needs to be the same temperature all the time and you will get better results you know if it if it's five degrees warmer one day than the next or later on through the day if you don't have your shop temperature controlled you will actually see um, fluctuations in your grain weight so this one is 0.98 that's Two tenths of a grain, that's no good. That goes into the Plinker's Choice batch. Which you will see they're mostly going to be one tenth light. But on occasion we'll have... Whoop. So if I have one that's teetering, that one's not teetering, it, it's solid on 9.9. Nine, but if it's teetering it goes over there. So... Now these have been repressed, so they tend to go on the light side of the 70 grains. So so I'll go ahead and set you back up over there, just one second, and we will go through the actually pressing the cores out. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and go over core forming. Now, how you set this die up um, is I will take one of my cylinders from the time before and I will take this and I will set this all all the way down. I'll take it up, make sure it's clear. Take this all the way down. This is already been pressed so I'm probably gonna ruin that round but that's okay so you go all the way down pressed all the way down to the wall right here and then you'll screw this down until it's firm and then you'll press it weigh it come back adjust it if needed and then I just tighten this by hand with well I'm tightening it down okay so um, Anyways, this one's probably too light now. But anyway, so you have one of those, and you, you set it up like that. And then we'll go, we'll press out five of these. One one thousand. Um, you know, I count every time. My wife kind of just has it down. You press the initial. One one thousand. 
You want to be in a nice stable position so you're getting the same press every time. One one thousand. And just kind of keep going. If you see light ones that uh, for some reason in the cutter got look like they're going to be light, I just toss those in a waste pile. One one thousand. You go too long, and it will make your slug too light. One one thousand. And then I kind of clean that rim off for the next process. One one thousand. These are approximately five grains overweight. That's personally what I like to do. Get a nice uniform clean press. One one thousand. So, um, and then I'm not going to do a shit ton of these for you guys here. Crap ton of these for here of this. It's pretty basic, guys. One one thousand. And then um, we'll show you how we do the tip forming as well, guys. So uh, if you guys want a more tutorial base or if you guys want me to do a live and do uh, training on this, I, I will um, have rags to clean your, your dies occasionally. Um, and you can see all of my rounds are going to look the same. This is a big deal the weight going in to the weight coming out is important and then the amount of lubricant you use now we have a one that we have that uh, tumbles up more I don't have it in here right now I was using it to clean brass anyways I tumble all the rounds all at once that we're gonna press for that time being so usually it's about four thousand rounds at a time we'll put them all in there with the metered out amount of lubricant it does not matter what your amount is if you're doing a thousand you have to figure out a consistent amount of lubricant to where they're not overcoated it's not coating your equipment with lubricant just a nice thin coat so i put them in here put the lid on and we just toss it you toss it around in there until everything is nice evenly coated and then you go to pressing so that that's seriously one of the biggest things when we were just doing little batches at a time when we we're first starting out we couldn't figure out where the uh, deviations were happening and it was actually the lubricant and then it could be temperature as well but we won't go into that right now so these are ones that I just pressed out. These are ones that were heavies that are now proper weight. 699, that's good. 698, that's light. 97, that's light. 699, I'm probably just going to have to go to like half a second because they're so close. Six nine nine seven zero. The scale is so sensitive if a gnat farts in here, it changes. So you have to not have air blowing on it. So yeah, I have it. I'm a little light right now. Six nine nine. Because we don't want a bunch of lights because lights can't be repressed. I'd rather it be heavy than light. So we had two bad out of that group. Spin you back around here real quick. I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to go ahead and pause you here and we'll come back to the tip forming section of setting up your press and I'll show you fully how to actually set that up, guys. Okay, guys, so now we're moving on to the tip forming um, segment of um, swedging your own slugs with the Corbin dies so uh, you don't have to do this but I put it back in the original bag that came in now it's ready to go for the next time I pull out 
my tip forming die. And this is a two, uh, 2.876, um, 2.73, this is just the forming die, uh, 0.300 cal. This is for S-Press P2, and it is 0.148 measurement. So, now, we have not touched this yet. Okay, so we're going to take a light round. Don't use your good rounds. You'll have rounds that are light or, you know, um, for us, if it's light or out of spec, this is what we use to set our dies here. So, these are a tenth of a grain out of spec. So uh, just reach in here and grab a couple of these. We'll go ahead and the other thing you're going to need for this job is a nice set of calipers. I have a nice set of digital calipers. Wipe them down. Everything gets sweaty and lube on it. No matter how clean you are, everything <laughs> ends up getting sweaty and lube on it because it coats your fingers with a very thin. Okay, so we're zeroed out. We're gonna go ahead, and this is without doing anything to it, right? This is where it's set at, at, the, at the original weight. Okay, 70 grains. So we're gonna push it down. Now you've, you've tipped, you've form tipped your hollow point. And these need to be at 0.50 to be in spec for us. And they're at five, one five five. Now, the other cool thing about that is you know that's the length of this finish. You could actually use that to set the length of this pin um, to get really close to your weight. But if you set one of these aside, one of your cylinders, and put it in a little baggie, which we do, um, that's 70 grain so that when you put the other cylinder making die you put that in and then you lower this down to the die so um, Anyways back to where we're at here. So so just easier ways to reset your die. So this one's an out-of-spec Round what did I do with that other one? Uh, did I put it back in here? Uh, hopefully I threw it in there because that's where it belongs. Anyways, so so that is a little too long. So we are going to make it smaller. So first we're going to loosen the die by turning this and this together. And we're just going to go a full two revolutions. And then we're going to check it. We'll see where we're at on that. Oh, well, sorry guys, I went the wrong way. Uh, 0.53, that's, I, I needed to go a full revolution around the other way. So now we'll put it back in there. Um, I typically don't do that because um, you want it to be a fresh, cylinder. So that's 4985. And I'll grab another one out of here. And we'll just go quarter turn back. And we'll test it. Okay. And this is kind of what you do. Okay, so that's 5020. Now it's just tiny, tiny adjustments to get it at five zero zero. If you just bring it down to your your stop plate here, you don't have to put any pressure on it. So that's still five zero two zero. If 
five zero zero we're set at five zero zero so now what we'll do is we'll t we'll test a few in a row and then we'll go to pressing them so that one still says 0 0.10 Point five, five zero five, five zero zero five. So that's within tolerance, but you just need to make sure that you touch all the way down on your so that's still five zero. Zero five, we're still good. I mean, I move that the most minute amount possible. So those are still good. Those are within spec. Four nine 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 is good. Five zero, just just for whatever reason, there's a little bit of variable in there. Five zero zero one zero five zero zero. You put a little put a little pressure on there. You can kind of tell where it's actually going to be sitting at. You don't want to squeeze super hard, but you want to be getting the truth of the matter of where it's at, and you want to try to put it on the same part of your calipers every time. Zero zero. So we're good. Everything's hitting zero zero. I just check a few and then what I'll do is I'll do a, quite a bit of a tray and uh, come back and double check guys and that's how simple it is to set your tip forming die. Pretty pretty simple so um, so guys that's been that. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And if you guys want more series done on the Corbin uh, hands S swedging press for um, these uh, 30 caliber slugs, we will do more. These are our eviscerator line that we're doing right now. So that is a huge hollow cavity inside of there, you know. So um, these are also our award-winning super accurate slugs as well super well balanced guys so if you want to buy those go to deadleadair.com deadleadair.com and pick you up a box um, $55 for a box of 200 and they are all within a tenth of a grain accuracy of advertised weight so um, Every single slug is weighed, so you don't have to. We weigh every slug, so you don't have to, guys. So be sure to check it out. Um, again, God bless, and keep that air dry.